Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our evening prayer service uh, for this weekend. If you're following along in your prayer book, uh, it begins as uh, always on page 18. Just take a brief moment of silence to collect our thoughts and to be aware of God with us. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of almighty God, our heavenly father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble to meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance, and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm for tonight is Psalm 119, starting at verse 1, or actually 97. You can find that on page 491. 
Psalm 119, beginning at verse 97, concluding at verse 105. Lord, what love have I unto thy law? All the day long is my study in it. Thy commandment maketh me wiser than mine enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, by thy, for thy testimonies are my study. I have more discernment than the aged, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep thy word. I have not shrunk from thy judgments, for thou teachest me. Oh, how sweet are thy words under my throat, yea, sweeter than honey under my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate all evil ways. Thy word is a lantern unto my feet and a light unto my path. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is from Paul's second letter to Timothy beginning to read at the 14th verse. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may not may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And on page 21, we say the Magnificat together. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He remembering his mercy hath hope in his servant Israel as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the second lesson is written in the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning to read at the 25th verse. Jesus said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road? and open the scriptures to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
We say the Nunc Dimittis on page 22. Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And, o Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the king, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. In the second colic for the second Sunday after Advent, which is also colic helping us, encouraging us to read the scriptures. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments. And also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So uh, on the Sunday morning, we've been doing a little sermon series on following Jesus, being a disciple of Jesus, the kinds of things that we're called to put into effort, put an effort into rather, um, not to earn uh, God's approval. Uh, we can't possibly do that. But, but to grow in our relationship with God and, and to grow in our, in our devotion to serving uh, King Jesus uh, and, and working in his kingdom. Uh, and uh, reading the scripture 
is uh, really very important. Um, we heard in the reading to Timothy, Paul's letter to Timothy, that uh, he is encouraging him uh, by reminding him of, of the scriptures that he's convinced of to be true. Um, and he speaks to him about how the scriptures are inspired and they are useful. Uh, they're not just for personal edification, but they're useful in, in godliness, in training up godliness, in uh, teaching, in rebuking, uh, in becoming righteous, in, in, in doing good works uh, for, for the kingdom. Um, and, and you, you could sort of say, although they're far more than this, but you could say the, the scriptures are a training manual for us as disciples of Jesus. Um, uh, it is interesting to note that, and very important to note, that the word inspired uh, comes from the Latin word to, to breathe, to breathe into, uh, and, and really, uh, you probably, we should, I think in the New International Version does translate it this way, uh, breathe into the, the scriptures are breathed in God breathed. Um, that is sort of the word for in, inspire the, the, the thought behind inspire. It's not what we think of inspire inspire being, um, you know, the, the author was so inspired. Uh, the athlete was inspired. It was an inspired uh, performance. Um, it almost has this sense that, um, uh, yeah, the, that it that it came from come, came from within this inspiration, uh, or that the Bible um, was inspire is inspiring to us, which of course it is, uh, or it ought to be, but um, but. That's not not its primary meaning, um, and it's certainly not. You know, you think of some poets. You know, they were inspired. Something just the spirit just something just came over them, and it was like their own consciousness left, and and they were filled with the, this poetry. Um, uh, it, that's not what it means either at all. It, it doesn't mean that at all. It means it means that. Uh, you know, we're not, the authors of the scriptures did not, we're not God's typewriters. They didn't lose their personalities. They didn't lose their context, their historical context. They didn't lose who they were um, at all. Uh, in fact, if anything, they were, became more obvious, you know, St. Paul's zeal for the gospel was similar to his zeal for Judaism. Um, uh, he was just that kind of person, um, and 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 the fact that inspired by God, the scriptures does not mean that the author's personality and identity were taken away, or skills for that matter, writing skills and and you know the use of language, but rather it means that they're breathed into that they're alive. That God's life is in there. Um, it is more than just, it's different than any other book. Um, it is alive. And when we read the scriptures prayerfully, we, we, um, yeah, we, we can hear that breath. We can feel that breath. Uh, and that is uh, amazing and wonderful. And so we, we learn. I read the letter to Galatians, Paul's letter to the Galatians on my way to my daughter's place, Ka Kathleen, on the subway. And uh, you, you are instructed in, uh, uh, in the importance of faith uh, and uh, as opposed to the law. Um, and uh, it really is an instruction manual. It's also clearly meant to rebuke 
people who were teaching a, a gospel other than this and clearly meant to you know say uh um that the gentile you know stop it smart up if you make the gentiles be circumcised and follow all the jewish laws then you're destroying the gospel you're destroying the gospel so it it it's clearly was meant as a rebuke um but it was also meant to uh to 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 help them in godliness and and to do good works and it reminded them the fruits of the spirit are joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, etc., etc. Um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, in the gospel reading, what a great story, the road to Emmaus. I only read part of it, but their hearts were burning within them. They, they commented on that when Jesus was opening the scriptures to them as they walked to... Uh, home from Jerusalem on the road to Emmaus. And, uh, and Jesus says, you know, all of the scriptures, he opened all of the scriptures to them and, and said how all of the scripture points to, to, to Jesus, to himself, to his death, to his resurrection. Um, and just a quick summary, a quick, real quick summary, but I, I, uh, N.T. Wright says the Bible is in five acts. Act one is creation and, and God calling forth this amazing world and human beings with this dignified position created in the image and likeness of God and meant to reflect God's glory in earth. Uh, uh, act one. <laughs> act two, humanity disobeys God seeks to, to live under its own rules and its own way of doing things. And it just messes up everything. It's just this train wreck. This sin is just a train wreck that, 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 that just is horrible to all of, all of creation. And then act three is, is God embodying himself in the people of Israel and this chosen people that he calls to be the light of the world, into the world, uh, to be a witness uh, to God calling them uh, uh, to, to, to be redeemed and to be made new again. And yet they fail. They fail. They fall so short, which leads to the fourth seed, which is Jesus. Um, and he is the real Israel. He does what Israel has been called to do, to be a blessing to all nations. Uh, and, and particularly in his death and in his, and in his resurrection. And, and he calls in the fifth act, the, uh, breathes into, the, it gives life to the church, to the new Israel. Uh, and you see the first part of the fifth act. It's the church, the early church, the early followers of Jesus. And then the second half of the fifth act is you and is me. Uh, and when we study the first four acts and we study it and we become familiar with it and it becomes our story, um, our cherished story, it, it becomes our framework for the world. It answers questions like, who are we? Where are we? What is the problem? What is the remedy? Um, uh, it gives us this way of looking at the world. And then we are able to finish Act 5 because we, we don't change the story. We, we are true to the story, but we improvise uh, knowing that story and we, and we, uh, we live into it. Uh, and we believe that God will finally take our part of the story and accumulatively uh, to bring in the new heaven and the new earth. Anyway, I've been going on quite at a long time. I hope these words have been helpful. I hope these words have been helpful to encourage you to read the Holy Scriptures and, um, uh, and, and to find your story in the midst of this big big divine story. Amen.
So we pray. Now we, we open our hearts and our prayers to the people of Syria and Turkey suffering from the horrible earthquake. Oh, we pray, Lord, for all the victims, all those who are grieving, all those who are still searching and rescuing, uh, all those who are caring for the thousands of homeless people, maybe millions of homeless people. Uh, we pray for aid to reach those who need it the most in a hurry and supplies. Uh, and we pray for healing there. And Lord, we pray for the children and families of Laval, Quebec, where there was that horrible, horrible, uh, uh, horrible experience of the bus killing uh, two little children. And we pray for all those kids and their parents. Um, and Lord, we pray for peace in Ukraine peace throughout the world. We pray for justice and righteousness. We pray that we would be good students of the scriptures and good actors, not play acting, but actually living our lives based on, on the story of the scriptures. And Lord, bless our parish, Christ Church St. James. Help us, uh, help us to serve you and to worship you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for worshiping the Lord with me tonight. God bless you.